Hello and welcome to part five of our exciting series on how to get more out of Bible study. In this particular session, we're going to be talking about three tips for interpreting scripture. Three tips for interpreting scripture. I hope that you will like, share, and subscribe. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. So, as we prepare to talk about three tips for interpreting scripture, I think it's really important that we begin with a big idea in mind. Hunters have a way of observing a scene before they ever shoot a bullet. And that's my first big idea for this particular Bible study. Observe, observe, observe. So as hunters go out to observe in the wild before they ever shoot a bullet, we should think of Bible study with sort of the same parameters in mind. Well, what do I mean? For instance, there are a lot of hunters who will hunt on the ground, but then there are those who will hunt up in the air in what's called a blind. And you see, the blind is designed to hide the hunter while he or she observes the entirety of the scene and the nature and the pastoral setting or the trees or whatever the case may be for the prey that they are hunting. They're in the blind and the idea is to disguise themselves or to hide themselves from the scene that they're observing. They're up in the air in a tree stand or in that blind in order to have a long range view of what's coming ahead as the animals come along into that special area that they have sort of designated as their site space in order to hunt that prey. The hunters will also oftentimes go through much of a, of a, of a tradition and much of a routine of disguising themselves. They will often paint their faces and they will spray things on their bodies that smell more like the animals than they do like humans. The entirety of the purpose of doing this is to disguise their odor from the prey that they're trying to catch. And so in a big way, the hunter is hunting, he is observing, but he is also disguising his identity, his odor, his natural musk, his natural smell, and any movement will be greatly minimized in order not to distract the animals or the prey that he or she is trying to capture. Well, we ought to think about Bible study in a very similar way. And here's what I mean, that we ought to approach Bible study with the very intentive mind of observing what's in the text without distracting it with our own preconceived notions, our own thoughts, our own senses, our own smell, our own taste, our own flavor. And so when we come to Bible study, it is important to observe, observe, observe. Do everything possible to minimize bringing your own baggage into the text. Instead, you want to be able to see what it is that God is saying through the author. And you want to observe, observe, observe. So how do you interpret scripture? Well, in this particular session, I'm going to give you the first three methods that will help you to interpret scripture. Here's point number one. The context governs the text. The context governs the text. Now, what does that mean? That means that it is never okay to simply isolate one verse outside of its community of verses taking it out of context because you can end up with a con for a text outside of its context only leaves you with a con. And so instead of isolating a text and inadvertently or sometimes deliberately trying to prove what you think or what you say or what your opinion may be, the right way to do it is to allow the text to be governed by the context. And so let's look at an example of this. For instance, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 16, Paul is speaking here. And listen to the words of Paul. Avoid worldly and empty chatter. Now, it almost sounds as if what Paul is saying here is that we should never tell a funny joke, never tell a funny story, never have a laugh 
with others because we are believers. But that is far from what Paul is actually teaching in that passage of 2 Timothy 2 and 16 when he says avoid worldly and empty chatter. In fact, you'd have to look at the full context and we'll just go with one verse above this time. But you'll get the idea of what I'm saying about allowing the context to govern the text. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, work hard so God can say to you, well done. Be a good workman, one who does not need to be ashamed when God examines your work. Know what his word says and means. You may be more familiar with this from the King James Version. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, whichever translation you look at, as you look at verse 15, it is easy to see that verse 16 is an outgrowth of verse 15, that the context of verse 16 is verse 15. Let's look at it again. The Living Bible Translation. Work hard so God can say to you, well done. As Paul writes to Timothy, he continues by saying, be a good workman, one who does not need to be ashamed when God examines your work. Know what his word says and means. Verse 16 again, steer clear of foolish discussions that lead people into the sin of anger with each other. So what Paul is simply telling him is not that you should never share a laugh with others. He is simply saying that in your working hard to be a good student of the word of God, in order for God to be proud of you and for you to make God look good to others in your communication concerning the word of God, stay away from discussions that are foolish concerning the scriptures. Stay away from discussions that lead to arguments over the scriptures because sin and anger can go together. In fact, the word anger, if you put the word, the letter D at the front of anger, you'll end up with the word danger. And so that's why it's referred to as the sin of anger with each other. So what Paul is simply telling Timothy is not that you should never laugh. In fact, quite to the contrary that we ought to do more laughing because laughter doeth good like a medicine. But what Paul is telling Timothy is don't argue over scripture. That's what he's saying. So when the context governs the text, as you just saw in that example, you can see that if you look at one verse by itself without its companion scriptures, you can end up with a wrong interpretation of scripture. You can end up thinking with that example we just shared that God wants us to always be stoic, to never smile, to never laugh, to never share, to never have joy. Quite to the contrary, God wants us to enjoy life. Yet, when it comes to a discussion of the scriptures, God wants us to be serious about our studiousness as a Bible student and to never argue scripture, never get into a debate about scripture that leads to sin or to anger resulting from sin. Now, here's the second point. In order for us to properly interpret scripture, number two, we have to consider the full counsel of the scriptures. Now, what is meant by considering the full counsel of the scriptures? It means this, that you don't take one passage of scripture and formulate a doctrine from it, that you don't isolate one text and assume that everything that is being taught in the Bible on that subject is all housed in that one verse. When you do that, you end up consulting your own wit rather than the inerrancy of scripture. And so we have to consider the full counsel of the scriptures in order to really understand any subject in the Bible. Let me give you another example. We should identify other passages that reference the subject in order to be fully informed from the scriptures. So in other words, if you read where Jesus says that if you ask anything of my father, he'll give it to you. You cannot isolate that verse and base your doctrine or your thought on that one verse. 
you have to consider other passages like James chapter number five. Are you asking with the right motives? You have to consider passages that, that, that teach us that we have to pray according to the will of God. So if we only isolate one verse and then base our doctrine on that, then we are not considering the full counsel of scripture and we are missing the message that the word of God has to teach to us. So we have to consider the full counsel of the scriptures, identifying other passages that reference that subject in order to be fully informed from the scriptures and in the word of God. Here's number three. The Bible confirms itself. Now, this must be an understanding that you develop whenever you're reading and studying God's word, that the Bible confirms itself. It does not contradict itself, but it ultimately confirms itself. And where there is a contradiction, go back and consider how you're looking at it versus how the scriptures are really aligned together. Now, What we need to understand concerning the Bible aligning itself is very important. And that is the fact that second Peter chapter one, verse three says this, his divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Again, second Peter one and three, it confirms and affirms the word of God as being pure and holy and taking care of its own confirmations. Listen to it again. Second Peter one and three, his divine power has given us everything we need for godly life. In other words, the word of God supplies everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us, by his own glory and his goodness. So it's important that we understand that when we approach the word of God, we should approach it with reference. We should not approach the word of God looking for fallacies, looking for error, but we should approach it looking for truth and with hope and belief in what the Lord has taught us and is communicating even now through his word. So, What do you think about these three points? I'd love to get your feedback in the comments. Please like, please share, please subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And by the way, if you'd like more, if you're in need of more study and want to continue to grow even further in God's word, I'd love to share more with you. Join my e-class. Simply send an email to me at clearstudies at gmail.com. Again, that's clearstudies at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to share a more extensive outline and a PDF format with you. We'll email it to you every week along with our other e-class participants. But you got to request it. So send that email today. Again, that email is clearstudies at gmail.com. Well, I really enjoyed sharing this teaching with you. Make sure you get the PDF. There's a whole lot more along with discussion questions that you can work through by yourself or even share with a friend remotely. You can text the questions or text the PDF to them or email it to them and have a good full discussion and get more out of this lesson. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again next time. Take care.